In this video, I'm going to show you how to use physical modeling to make synth presets sound like acoustic instruments. With this technique, we can make instruments that are more playable, expressive, and flexible than a sample library. Let me show you some examples. If you want to download these presets, I left links in the video description. So why not just use samples? After all, what could be more realistic than an actual recording of that instrument? Samples can be really nice, but the problem comes in when you want to play something expressive or you want to use the samples in a way that's very different than the original context. Let's use this trombone sample library as an example. When recording this library, a trombone player played every note of the trombone at several different volumes. But there are only so many volumes you can realistically record. So what happens when I'm playing a musical phrase that gradually gets louder, for example? You'll hear the trombone jump from a quiet note to a much louder note that kind of sticks out, rather than seamlessly getting louder in a musically expressive way. Now what if we don't have a big expensive sample library? What if we just have one note? When I start playing in a different range, the timbre gets weird. The low notes are longer and duller, while high notes are shorter and too bright. This can be used as a neat creative effect. For example, the famous sound from Goldeneye for the N64 was a cymbal or tambourine pitched down several octaves. It's a cool sound, but it sure doesn't sound like a tambourine anymore. This is where physical modeling comes in. According to Wikipedia, physical modeling attempts to replicate laws of physics that govern sound production. So basically, instead of trying to match the exact harmonic content of a sound like we did in my last video, we're trying to simulate the process used to create an acoustic sound like a trumpet or a toy piano. Let's start with a trumpet or a trombone. To make a sound on a brass instrument, you blow into it. The faster the air, the louder and brassier or brighter it sounds. I've replicated that process with this brass preset in the Free Vital Synthesizer. This is a simplified version of the preset from my most popular Vital tutorial. In that preset, envelope 1 controlled volume and wavetable position. The higher the wavetable position, the brighter or brassier the sound is because it's adding harmonics. In this version, instead of using an envelope to control volume and wavetable position, I'm using the mod wheel. Then I'm controlling the mod wheel with a breath controller. This breath controller makes a huge difference because it emulates the way a real brass instrument is played. The faster my airstream, the louder and brassier the synth is, just like a real brass instrument. Another common characteristic of acoustic instruments is a certain frequency range that resonates louder than other frequency ranges due to the size and shape of that instrument. I found that resonance happens somewhere around 1500 Hz for brass instruments like the trombone. I did this by ear, but you could use a spectrum analyzer like SPAN to get more scientific. One interesting quirk of acoustic instruments is that different registers tend to sound different. The low end of a trombone will sound different than the high end. The main difference is that higher notes will have fewer harmonics. That's why I have a low pass filter here with only a little bit of key tracking. I'm also controlling the amount of wavetable modulation with the note modulator. Basically, from low B-flat on down, you get the most wavetable position modulation, meaning more harmonics. Then, as notes get higher, up until a certain point, you get less wavetable modulation, resulting in a less brassy or bright sound.
Another important ingredient for this preset to sound realistic is convolution reverb. A convolution effect lets you make a sound resonate like it would in a real space, like a concert hall, a cathedral, a bathroom, or even the body of a guitar. Imagine you record a balloon pop in a room. Then you remove the sound of the balloon popping from the beginning of the recording. Then what you're left with is a recording of how that room responds to a sound. Some frequencies will resonate louder or for longer depending on the size, shape, and material of the space you're in. Now with the convolution effect, we can apply that impulse response to our synthesizer, making it sound like our synthesizer is inside that space. For this brass sound, I'm using an impulse response called Brass Hall found in Ableton's convolution plugin. But you can use a free convolution plugin called M Convolution Easy. This plugin has several concert halls like this one, in addition to a lot of creative impulse responses from a guitar cabinet to the inside of a turtle shell. Now let's make some pitched percussion instruments that are more useful than samples by using my new favorite free plugin called the Spectral Compressor. Part of the reason our toy piano sounded bad in a sampler was because the whole sample was transposing. When you play a note on a toy piano, you hear the noise of a hammer striking a metal rod. That's the transient of the sound. Then you hear the rod resonate from the vibration caused by the impact. The main difference between different notes is the resonating frequencies of the different rods, not the sound of the transient. But what if we could separate those two sounds, the noisy transient from the metal rod's resonance? Then we could set the resonance to transpose and the noisy transient not to transpose. First, I'm going to shorten this sample so I don't hear the release of the note. You could keep that in, but I prefer it gone. Now let's remove the resonating frequencies of the sound. To do that, I'm going to use the Free Spectral Compressor plugin. If you've heard of the plugin Soothe, this is kind of like Free Soothe. Basically, this is a multi-band compressor if instead of three bands, it had 16,384. Let's load this in and remove the resonances from this sample. I'm going to turn the ratio all the way up for downwards compression. Then I'll lower the threshold until I stop hearing resonance that gives the sound its musical pitch. Kind of like Soothe 2, I can control which frequency ranges I want to compress by adjusting the threshold curve. I can also move that curve with the threshold center. This can help me only compress the parts I need to. So now I just have the noisy transient part of the sound. If I want just the tonal part, I can add a duplicate track and invert the phase. In Ableton, you can do that by right-clicking an effect, creating a group, duplicating this with Command D, and then I'll add a utility to this one and flip the phase. Now I can hear everything that I was cutting out. So I could make a wavetable out of this portion, but I'll save that for another video. For now, I just want this noisy little transient. I'll make my own resonances in Vital. So I'll bounce this track and drag it into the sampler in Vital. Now to get some of the tonal part of the sound back, I can use the Carpless Strong technique by adding a comb or phaser filter with high resonance. Since the toy piano had metallic inharmonic resonances, I'm going to use the phaser filter and set the cutoff pretty high at about plus 58 semitones. Then I can turn on key tracking to play different notes. If I want the resonances to really ring out, I can turn resonance up to 100%. In my kalimba preset, I turned up resonance to about 95%, which is a lot more subtle.
This sound was made using the same technique of removing the resonances from a kalimba sample until I was left with the noisy transient. Then I reintroduced some resonance with the key tracking phaser filter and the oscillator, which I'll get to soon. Now back to our toy piano preset. With resonance at 100%, the filter can ring out for a long time. So if you want more control, you can use an envelope to control filter mix. We can also tame the low and high end by putting this through a bandpass filter, by routing filter 1 through filter 2, and adjusting the blend of filter 2. Since I'm missing the harmonic portion, I can just add a sine wave. Then let's control the sine wave's volume with another envelope. Now to make this preset more realistic, I added velocity sensitivity. Let's take a look at how I did it in the finished version. Here I have velocity controlling sample level, oscillator level, filter 2 cutoff a little bit, filter 1 resonance a very little bit, and then I have velocity controlling the length of the envelopes so that lower velocities are shorter. If you want velocity to change the shape of the envelope, you could set it to modulate modulation power in the matrix. Now I have 128 velocities instead of however many samples of each note somebody put into a sample library, which is usually well under 30. I can also play this instrument past the typical range of a toy piano, and it still sounds like a plausible acoustic instrument. We can also manipulate the preset more easily than a sample. For example, in my version, I decided to add in some detune like you might hear in a real piano. To do that, I used the stereo modulator to modulate filter 1 cutoff a very small amount. Then I also have a duplicate oscillator that I'm detuning as well. I'm controlling all those detune amounts with a macro. I also set the preset to be mono so that the detuned voices sound like they're coming from one source, rather than one from the left channel and another from the right. It's important to note that with all three physically modeled instruments I demonstrated, there were elements of imperfection that happened in the real world. In the brass instruments, my Airstream added an imperfect but expressive element to the sound. The Airstream was heard because it was controlling the volume and brightness of the sound. Then when we made a kalimba, we kept the noise from the sample which created imperfect resonances when applying the phaser filter. Most of the appeal of an acoustic instrument is hearing the player's expression, but another part of the appeal is the unexpected imperfections caused by the quirks of the instrument or the inaccuracies of the player. That's why I frequently add a very subtle level of randomness to these sounds. I might set a random LFO to modulate a wave warping algorithm like Smear, or I might use the random modulator on a percussive instrument so that every note has a slightly different value for another parameter controlling timbre. It's important to note that these presets can't fully replace the performance of a talented human musician. There are so many subtleties to a musical performance that a musician spent years practicing. And there are a lot of idiosyncrasies of each instrument that are difficult to account for as well. But physical modeling can be useful when you can't afford to hire a musician and if you want an instrument that's more expressive and flexible than a sample. Physical modeling is also useful for creating new instruments that are based on the physics of existing instruments. 
So anyways, I hope you enjoy the video and thank you for watching.